Hi you guys, welcome back to first impression video. This is Butterick's fall collection. If this is your very first first impression video, welcome. Um, we are going to take a look at all of the patterns in Butterick's new collection. Kind of like looking through the catalog, sitting with a friend. We're going to talk about fit, fabrication, overall design, and we're just going to, you know, chat. So leave your comments uh, and opinions in the comment section as well. Um, don't let me hang it out here guys. Okay. Um, and if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell. So you never, ever miss another one. All right. First up, we have women's pants, close fitting pants, sit one inch below the waist, have princess seams, top stitching, waist facings, and stitch stems. View A is a tapered fit. View B is boot cut with front vent which I think is probably more of a slit, but we'll look at it. Both pants have invisible side seam zipper. Okay. So yeah, this is feeling like Ponty pants from five or so years ago. Um, it's also reminding me a lot of the itch to stitch mountain view jeans. I made those out of a Ponty knit that I could just pull on, um, and wore them for years and years. But, um, this view looks a lot like that with the princess seams, very, very plain, no pocketing, nothing going on. Um, actually, another thing about it, the Mountain View does have lots of pocketing. So scratch that whole idea. But this has taken us back to like Loft, Ann Taylor Loft circa 2018. Okay, <laughs> maybe even before that. We have the flared version and it is an actual vent. It's not a slit. That is really interesting. I'm not 100% sold on the contrasting top stitching when you have it go out like this. That is a little disruptive, but in terms of fit, my goodness, this line is about as perfectly straight as you can possibly get. All right, so there is our model. There's an illustration. Okay, here's the back. Again, I'm not sure I would want, you know, lines going down my body like this, but you know, to each their own. <laughs> the fit. Like I was saying before, it looks really, really good. I wish we could see it. Um, the waistband, maybe they'll give us some photos. Maybe not. Um, we'll, no, that's it. That's the only photos we get. So couldn't really see, I mean, how the waistband is designed or anything. Um, but I'm thinking there, we'll look at the line drawings, but just judging from this, I'm thinking that there's like an inside facing. And they already said side zipper. So yeah, these just pull on and then you pray to God that they stay up. <laughs> All right, moderate stretch knits. Okay, so it is a pull on Ponty pant, such as double knit, interlock Ponty. Okay, good. So double knit, yeah, I don't know though. Double knit, I think I would want a waistband with some elastic in it for double knit. Ah, uh, yeah, it's worth a try though. Um, and then interlock is just a little bit lighter weight. So yeah, you could really make anything from like pull on jean style pants, um, to like, kind of like pajama pants, I guess. And this is the women's pattern. So it's sizes 20 through 38. Um, and that puts us at a finished hip of 43 to 61 inches with one inch of positive ease at the hip. That makes perfect sense. I wish they would have put the waist measurement, and I'm hoping the waist is like zero or negative ease, just by a little bit, half an inch to an inch maybe. Um, that's what I would be looking for for these pants. But yeah, just a little pull on style that you can dress up or dress down. Classic Butterick situation. But now that I'm thinking about it, double knit, you might not need a zipper for double knit. Interlock, you might not even need a zipper. I think just for, oh, I don't know, the Ponty, like I said, I don't know. You could try it on with or without the zipper and see if you even need that. But I certainly didn't whenever I made mine. I wanted to check the um, notions too really quick. They say, oh, just the zipper. There's no elastic. Huh but there is interfacing. So the waistband is interfaced and that is not stretching. So that's why you would need the zipper. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Now we have a robe, very loose fitting robe with front zipper closing has stand collar 
long set in sleeve stitch hems and length variations view a has front patch pockets view b has side seam pockets this just feels really out of place after the like very like jarring like a jump scare from the pants to this but yeah it's just a zip up rope guys set in sleeves i mean a very fancy like stand up collar i mean she a fancy rope No hood, only the stand-up collar. Yeah, not much to say about this one. Again, stretch knits. So French cherry, jersey, haunty, sweatshirt fleece. Yeah, that could, that, I mean, yeah, okay. It's never hot enough here for me to wear a head-to-toe sweatshirt, but I get that other places it might be. Extra small to 1X. Oh, sorry, up to 5X, actually. Extra small, up to 5X. So, and I'm sure it's, like, super roomy. So, I don't even know if they have finished garment measurements on here. Yeah, they don't. So, um, so yeah, that's a one size or one pattern fits most, um, like, ideal for making holiday gifts and things like that. If you wanted to make, like, a robe for everyone in your family or everyone in your bridal party, you know, things like of that nature. But, yeah, just not much to say about a row. Okay. So now we have a knit top, three knits in a row. Pullover knit, cowl neck top, close fitting through the bust, have flared high low hems and set in sleeves. Three quarter inch sleeves for view A. View B has a tulip hem, button trim, and long sleeves. Yeah, as more and more people are being required to go back to the office, but still, I mean, I think the offices are kind of keeping it a little bit casual in terms of like defining what workwear means. Um, this would be a really great option at the high low, but it's still long enough. It covers you. You could wear them with the Ponty pants, which isn't that what this is. I'd be surprised if that is not what those are. Um, this one has this button band that I think it's faux. I don't think it actually works. Um, but you have your little big ruffly hem there. So a good dress up, dress down kind of top, um, a little too like buttoned up for my lifestyle um but i can imagine if i were going into an office somewhere um i would be reaching for this or probably just a little bit more conservative i guess in my styling i would i would reach for that i have some patterns that are like view a already um they do make really comfortable great little sweaters so 50 percent stretch um because it's a pull on but i will say this cowl is so generous there's the opening you can see the opening of that you might even be able to fudge that a little bit and go down on your stretch percentage. But test it first. Make sure you can get the cowl over your, your head. Um, but they're recommending cotton spandex, jersey knits, rayon, sorry, poly span, rayon span. Yeah, but I think you could do like sweater knits and stuff too. I would follow the 50% cross grain more than I would follow any of this other stuff. Um, and it looks like sizes 4 to 20. And that gives us a finished bust of 30 to 42 and a half. Um, so close fitting through the bust, only about half an inch of ease, which makes sense for a knit top. All right. So don't be afraid of that. Perfect. Really cute. Okay. Now we have this little jacket, skirt, and pants. Okay. So we've talked about these little like lifestyle wardrobe patterns before bang for the buck right you get three patterns in one pattern <laughs> um three designs in one pattern and most of the designs can also be hacked so you could even get like maybe even more if you just think about pattern hacking so loose fitting jacket in two lengths has shoulder pads long set in sleeves built-in shawl collar which i think built in means like grown on right isn't that the same wouldn't you think Side seam pockets, stitched hems, and a matching tie belt. Straight skirt and wide leg pants are fitted through the hip. Both skirt and pants have shape to yoke, invisible center back zipper, and stitched hems. Skirt has a back slit. Okay, so a pencil skirt and then like, you know, boot cut pants. So here are the two lengths of the jackets. This was like a wool looking thing, but you could also, you know, lighten it up into like a, like a linen or something even if you wanted. And then we've got your classic little trouser. Again, this is like workwear for the modern woman, right? Like if you have to go into an office, this is how, what, how you show up in. Um, and you look perfectly 
appropriate. Let me see without the jacket. Thank you. Okay, so we have this little weight. It's a classic trouser, guys. Or is this a skirt? No, it's the pants. Classic trouser. Uh, looks like a one, one and a half inch uh, waistband. Sits one inch below the waist. Um, kind of like on your high hip, kind of. Center back seam, no pockets, real clean, real simple. Yeah, the fit looks fine. This is all happening here, all these wrinkles, because her leg is, like, turned out, and she's got most of her weight on this one. But this one looks really beautiful. There's the back of the jacket. The jacket looks great, too. The sleeve looks awesome. You know, the there's shoulder pads in here, so you have to have a longer sleeve or shoulder um, width for that. And then the sleeve head is coming right off of the edge of her shoulder and the sleeve goes straight down. It's really pretty. Excellent. They didn't show us the skirt, but I guess it's, you know, the same as the pants from the crotch up. Um, but yeah, think about like hacking the skirt into like a flared skirt. That's a really easy hack to do. You could hack the pants into shorts, you know, different things like that. Okay. So they're going to be recommending like a uh, suiting type fabric. So crepe, gabardine, wool blends, and wool crepe. I do wish they would have separated fabrics for the pants and skirts from the jacket. Because I do think that the jacket could also be a coat, right? Like you could make it really nice and warm using a coating. But they don't specify that here. So if you're kind of new to sewing, then you just think that you can use wool crepe for everything. Um, and like you could, you could, um, but you don't have to. All right. So lining fabrics also, and then lightweight fusible, and then you need shoulder pads and invisible zipper eight to 26 on the size range. That is a finished, who knows? It is a body measurement of 31 and a half up to 48 in the bust up to 50 inches in the hip. Now that's not Fully, fully size inclusive, but it's not bad for all of them being in one pattern, right? Are they all in one or did they break it up? I can't remember if this is, okay, it's broken up. Never mind. 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. New look? Are those the ones that have it all in one? And then it's very limited? All right. So this one does have like two size categories within misses. All right. Next, we have a knit dress by Palmer Plush. So if you don't know, Palmer Plush are kind of the people who really, really focus on fit. All of their pattern pieces have like um, lines on them that show you like how to make the adjustment that you're working on, whether it's a full bust or whatever it is that they'll kind of talk you through how to take those measurements, how to know if you need to adjust, how to adjust it, you know, all of that kind of stuff. They're also really big on tissue fitting. All right, knit dresses in three lengths have v-neck and wide waistband with gathers on bodice and skirt. View A is sleeveless. View B and C have three quarter inch sleeves. Okay, so again, perfectly suitable for workwear, for church, for any of those kind of places. This one actually is a really cute little conservative date night situation happening. Uh, maybe like if <laughs> I'm trying to think of like younger people situations that they would wear something like this too. But if like you're going to meet your boyfriend's parents for the first time or something, you know, that would be really nice. Yeah, I do think this little cowl situation is very flattering. It's got a higher waistband than your than your typical waist. So that makes it like super comfortable, bump friendly if you're pregnant or going to be pregnant. Um or postpartum, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, or do you just like tacos and you get inflammation, you know, whatever it is, you get bloated really easily. Um, yeah, super, super comfortable. And with all the different versions, meaning like the, I mean, that's with every dress, but the different lengths and the different sleeves, you could make one of these for every season. Yeah. And honestly, like the fabric that you buy for these kinds of dresses, I mean, yes, you could get like a silk jersey and it would be not inexpensive, but you could also just get like an ITY knit. Those are like $4 a yard at some places, you know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be super, super expensive. So stretch knits only, such as cotton lycra, cotton knit, jersey, and they didn't put the stretch percentage on here. Why can't we just be consistent? You know, like just, I don't... I don't understand. <laughs> Sizes 4 through 20 on this one. That's a finished bust of 34 to 46 and a half. 
Um, the waist and the hip are a little bit harder to determine because, you know, the A-line starts so high. So I would go off your bust measurement. Nice, classic dress, though. You will reach for that again and again. It's suitable for lots and lots of different scenarios. Okay, this is knit top and pants. Has every single pattern been in knit so far? Except for the suiting, right? Yeah. All right, so tops and pants. Close fitting pullover tops have neckline variations, elbow or long sleeves, and narrow hems. Fitted straight legged <laughs> or slightly flare pants have elastic waist and no side seams. No side seams. Again, Palmer plush. So you've got your little bateau boat neck line, your sleeve. Didn't it say neckline variations? So you have, uh, but okay, so then there's the three quarter sleeve or the long sleeve, and then the really pretty wide leg or the more um, close fitting boot cut. But again, the fit on Palmer plush should be top notch. Like if you really want to focus on fitting this next quarter before the end of the year, get a Palmer plush pattern, spend a weekend with it, see what they have to offer in terms of, you know, they're not going to tell you which, like, oh, what am I trying to say? The tissue fitting will help you determine which alteration you need, but sometimes the alteration we think we need is not the exact alteration we actually need. So you can go down a bit of a rabbit hole there, like overcorrecting or correcting things that don't need to be correct, cor corrected. But either way, their method has worked for decades. Like Patty Palmer has passed this down to her daughter. So it's like a multi-generational situation happening here. So um, yeah, give it a try if you haven't already. Of course, there's always the top down center out method um, of pant fitting. You can try that too. But oops. Um, give them a go if you haven't. I mean, they are, in terms of the big four, like the fitting company, the fitting brand. So here's the back of the shirts and the pants, really. But yeah, every time I look at their little, I don't know if these fit models are exactly like picked just for Palmer plush patterns or if they're just, they just show up for Butterick photo shoot and then get to wear the Palmer plush stuff. But most of the time, the fit on the Palmer plush fit models always look really, really good. Okay, so the back here we have, oh yeah, it does look like a little cowl neck or a boat neck. Cowl neck or boat neck. And then wide leg pants or closer fitting pants. And see, to, here we'll look at the line drawings in a second. So moderate stretch and it's only cotton knit interlock jersey rayon knits again i wish they would separate view a use these knits view b use or c and d use these knits because the top and the pants i don't know that you'd want to make the same make those patterns out of the same fabric like a rayon for the top is great a rayon for the pants i don't know about that one and a quarter yards of half inch elastic Three quarter inch elastic. Okay. Six to 22 on the size range. Here are our finished garment measurements. We have the bust for the top. The waist has, this is the waist for the top. They're not going to give us the waist for the pant. Mm, okay. And it's not like these are, I don't want you guys to think that these are elastic waist pants. They're not. They're not going to be bunchy at all. There's like, um, like a casing on the inside. Like you, sew it together and you turn it all to the inside and that's where the elastic goes. So you don't see any wrinkles or bumps from the outside of the pant. It's like the, the elastic is almost as, a, acting as like a, like a stay, like a waist stay kind of. Um, it doesn't, it shouldn't be like cinching in, cinching in. It should just act more as like a structural type of thing. But you can see here too, the back of the closer fitting pants has four darts going around it, going around the back, two on each side. I am such a like dramatic pair that I figured out that if I did three, that looks best on me. So don't feel limited to the number of darts that you can put on the back. 
These come with two because they are so focused on fitting, but add more if you need them. The front here also has one dart. If you've got like a belly protrusion, add more darts. But what's also interesting is that the, do you see the wide leg pants don't have any darting? I don't know why these two would be so different. You know, it doesn't say that the waistlines are different and there's no pictures of the waistline, so we can't really see those. But that would that that makes me think that I would want to check out the the instructions first. Just to make sure I know what I'm getting myself into. I can't I cannot think of a good reason why one would have the darts and one wouldn't. Well, there's the, there's this of the waist, but, oh, geez, what is happening? But you can't see the darts because it's black fabric, right? Can you guys see any darts? Anybody? I'm like moving my screen around. I don't know. Maybe there aren't any. Maybe that's why they put that big belt on her to cover it up. Now, now this is when the conspiracy theories start going and my cynicism starts kicking in. But yeah, I just wanted to double check. Yeah, C does not have any darts. Huh. Interesting. Okay, but really classic, again, classic look from Butters. Okay, so this is the same top as this one here in the women's. Again, I wish they put those back to back so that it's easier for me and all of us to know, okay, these are the same two things. We'll just look through these pictures really quickly. Same description, same everything. They put her in the alternate view. I like when they do that. You can see both of them sewn up. And this is a really pretty, like, lightweight jersey of some kind. So you can see what it looks like out of, like, a t-shirt, right? This becomes a lot more, like, relaxed. But, again, I think that, oh, boy, yeah. So those are the jeans from the first pattern, right? And they put it with this top. So great little combo of like a flary kind of top with a fitted to flare pant, right? That looks really cute and modern. Like that's great for a casual Friday at work. There's the back of another version that they made. We're really going to get the back of that one. This is what I don't understand. You made a whole version out of this beige fabric and you're going to give us one photo of it. That makes literally zero sense to me in fact this purple one we only get one photo of two they just zoom in and zoom out like i know she was there clicking away tons of photos give us more photos please and i do appreciate the back photo because sometimes that's not included at all but okay so this here a lot of you are probably looking at that and going that's not my most favorite thing this is happening because it's a little too tight around the bum, I think, and it's causing it to flare out. This center back is like too tight right here, so it's causing it at the at the hip, like the full hip apex, it's causing it to kind of flare out like that. Um, so I think if they made it a little bit bigger, wider through here, they would be more evenly distributed throughout, I think. There is just a lot of fullness in the in the sides and back of this too. Um, so that could also just be it clinging to her pants maybe. It might even be something as simple as that. It does kind of look though that, like they might have tried to pull it down like it feels like it's being pulled down right and maybe if she were just to like loosen it up a little bit and let it sit where it wants to sit it wouldn't do that it's just too hard to say from just one photo okie dokie next up we yeah this little dress right yeah okay that's where we are so this is a mrs dress with short and long sleeves slightly flared pullover dress has neck facings back keyhole opening and button and thread loop closure, bust starts, asymmetric seaming, side seam pockets, and stitched hems. View A has short sleeves, view B has long sleeves. I'm pretty sure I have a pattern just like this. I don't think it's for knits though. I think it's for wovens. But I did make a dress a few years ago based off of the 
based off of the Love Notions game day tee that was like three shades of red and pink for Valentine's Day. It turned out really, really cute. And I drafted my own version of this. Don't do that. That was really, really, really hard to do. Um, so I'm glad to see that they have a pattern where people can just do, just copy somebody else's work because it took forever and it still didn't turn out quite right. Um, but nobody really noticed but me. But that's a cute idea to do like solids and do all monochromatic. Really cute idea for that. Um, this is it with like different prints. Obviously all of these, the only thing they have in common is they have a black background. That's a really easy way to mix prints. We have one that's kind of like, you know, really large print. We've got a teeny, teeny, tiny print and then a medium sized print. So that's the easiest way to print mix if you're curious. All right, so there's the short sleeve version. Here she is, ready for work. Yeah, I think that this is probably not necessary, seeing how open the neckline is in the front. I think you could definitely get that over your head, no problem, especially because it's a knit with a facing. Um, it's it's a bit more of an A-line shape than I think you're probably going to, than you may realize. Um, it's definitely kind of like a little bit of a tent shape as it's meant to be. Yeah, then the the line drawings do illustrate that. I think that maybe the Yeah, this version looks a little bit more cent like a little bit more close fitting through here. Obviously, you could definitely take in on the side um and have it a little bit more shapely. This one it you know, she doesn't have any shape at all. You can't even really tell where her bust apex is at all. Um, so it might be a little bit too big for her, but yeah. And the side seams are really the only place you could try and futz around with some um, fisheye darts. But the problem is, where's the back? Putting a fisheye dart right here, uh, that's just like a lot. You'd have to only put one. You'd start it here at this seam and you put one right here. And it would pull in right at this area. And then the other one would be long through here. That's how you would do it. The correct way. Of course, you can just do whatever you want. Don't listen to me. Um, okay. The back. Let's see. It is for wovens. Okay. So is this a remake? Because I have a pattern like this. I'll have to pull it out um, and update you guys if it's the same or not. Crepe, linen blends, rayon chalet, stable knits. I, I think the envelope of the other one has chambray. Is anybody else remembering this? It wasn't even from that long ago. Like within the last five years, I feel like. Um, 8 to 26 on the size range. Um, that puts us at a bust up to 54. So, yeah, I think that's the largest that their women's goes is 26 up to 54 inches in the bust. And then the, the hip goes up to 60, but you know, it's supposed to be kind of loose fitting down there. So yeah, base it off your bust measurement. Even if you're like an extreme pair like me. All right, now what's next? We have, oh, this is the Mrs. version of the women's pants we looked at already. So this is like the, the, pull on ponty pant, right? Here's the denim looking ones. So remember how I was commenting on how straight the top stitching line was on the other pair? You can see here, because these pants are fitted, right? Your body is going to take on curves. She's leaning into this hip. It's going to be a little bit curvier. It's going to twist a little bit if you have your foot turned out. So, you know, all of this is normal, right? When you're standing up perfectly straight and both of your feet facing forward, which you never stand like that normally anyways, then they would be straight lines. But because it's so fitted, like so fitted, close fitted throughout, you're going to get some waviness. If you don't like being able to see that, then you can just top stitch in a, like a darker color to where it blends in a little bit more. But I haven't seen a skinny pant like that, a close fitting pant like that in so long. I will say having front and back princess seams on a pant does make it super easy to fit, or I should say easier 
because you can make your muslin, you have those five eighths inch seam allowances, you can let it out in the bum and then take it in on the, on the under thigh. You can like, you know, pinch and pull from exactly where you need all throughout these princess seams. Because mostly when you're making adjustments to pants, it's not to the sides, it's to the front and back. So you can do that really easily through here. And I will say the fit of this, I mean, considering they're so close fitting, they look really good on her. Okay, yeah, we saw all this already. Great. Okay, now we have Butter Retro. These are always fun. I'm getting better at them, though, you guys that have been watching for a while. I haven't gotten hung up on a sewing term in a long time. Watch a knock on wood. All right, Vintage Butter 1950s, quick and easy, slim coat sewing pattern. View A and B, I'm sorry, views A and C, clutch coat. A and C are clutch coats. Let's see. I don't know what that means. With shawl collar, below elbow, push up sleeves. View B, long, straight sleeved. View D, button front, collarless coat with push up sleeves is bound on the front with contrasting braid. Okay, so what is a clutch coat? I thought it meant clutch bag. But that's not a clutch bag, that's a handbag. The push-up sleeve is a interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to know if you guys know what the term where the term clutch coat comes from. Does that have to do with driving a car? All right, clutch coat it is. It is very simple. It's just a box. You have that really big collar and then two little almost like rectangles for sleeves. I do like the little darts on the shoulder, though. Cotton coatings, rayon coatings, wool coatings. Okay. 6 to 24. Clutch coat. Okay, now we have a modern jacket. This is like a little blazer. Um, we just looked at Simplicity's fall collection. They had a blazer as well boxy straight line blazer those are everywhere right now most mostly like if you're trying to wear them like the trendy way it's like over either like bike shorts or over like baggy baggy jeans with like a crop top it's like blazers are happening in all the weirdest most interesting ways um it's another palmer plush pattern uh Notch lapel. Yeah, you can see all the fitting here with all these like lines. There's a little vent in the back. Um, well, pockets, two piece long sleeves, back vent. Yeah, it's all happening. Yep, should fit like a dream. And it does. I think this has a contrast like something, leather or something. Beautiful. Really stunning. Okay. Uh, crepe, gabardine, linen, poplin. And then you can do the contrast of B and like make it like a tuxedo and do like a silk um, shiny thing or like they, they showcase leather. You could do suede, you know, all that kind of stuff or another color altogether if you wanted. But 8 to 26 on the size range there. And it's the closest fitting in the hip. So that's what you want to look at the most. Um, and the hip has 8 inches of E. So that's still pretty generous. All right, now we have this little cutie tunic and pants. Vintage 70s tunic and pants pattern. Semi-fitted wrap dress sits two inches below the knee. Tunic top has V neckline, attached contrast tie or purchase belt. Full long sleeves with gathered cap and elasticized at wrist. Straight legged pants have elasticized waistline. Oh, right. Oh, okay. 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 So it's a wrap dress. We've got an angled dart and then this little doodad that wraps around your body and ties with a gathered sleeve cap and elasticated sleeves. Or you can get this little like belt look, make it tunic length and then add the pants.
which are just elastic. So interesting. Okay. Shally, double crepe, jersey, satin back crepe. I've only ever seen that written as crepe back satin. So to see it, satin back crepe. I guess satin, you know, took crepe to court and said, I want to be listed first and crepe lost. So now it's satin back crepe instead of crepe back satin. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, here's something. Syrah. Syrah. S-U-R-A-H. Or synthetic mixtures. Oh God. Okay. Snap fasteners. Bias tape. An elastic for the top and tunic or dress and tunic and then the pants have a zipper a hook and eye and also elastic 8 to 26 on the size range yeah the hip for the pants have yeah four and a half inches of ease that's pretty good and everything else about it is pretty roomy dress included yeah I mean I think there are better wrap dresses out there um, but if you're just really into using you know, vintage reproduction patterns, like, that's as good as any. I mean, the little tie thing, which is the most special part about it, is really just, like you saw in the line drawing, it's just literally, like, a string. Like this. It's just to make a tube. You could add that to any pattern you've already got, and you've got the same look. So, um, it didn't end up being as special as I thought. All right, now we've got baby patterns. <laughs> No babies attached to blankets this time, like um, like the simplicity patterns were. But then we have, are these all the same collection? Wait, is this all Butterick Fall 44 patterns? Good grief. No, we've seen this one, right? That was summer. But I haven't seen this, or did I? Is this a summer? Why do they have to make this so confusing? Where? What number are these? 5960, I don't know. I'm going to have to go back. No, 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 no. I remember her. Oh, and here's the women's version of that dress that um, I liked so much. Okay, so it looks like summer and fall have gotten mixed up. I don't want to repeat myself from summer. I don't really want to leave out a fall pattern either, but I think that's a lesser of two evils, and I'm starting to remember all of these now. So, some I don't know. This one, I don't know if I reviewed that one or not, but I think we got most of them. Um, so that's going to have to be good enough for today, guys. Sorry, it's a their website issue. They need to, you know, it should be easier to understand. Hold on, let me do this. What happens when I click fall? Now what happens? Okay, then that's it. All right, now I feel a lot more confident that I didn't miss any. I shouldn't have to do that because I clicked new sewing pattern, so it should just be the most recent collection, but listen. Listen, what can we do? At least we got a collection from Butterick, right? Two in a row. Way to go, Butterick. All right, so I feel like Butterick is really, like, staying in their lane, right? We are going to be the women's workwear, conservative, no trends here. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to keep things real clean, real simple for the everyday woman. No problem wearing any of this stuff to Target at all. Um... I'm probably not going to pick up any of these patterns. They feel a little bit like I've been collecting patterns for so long. I have a lot of these designs already. So nothing new. But I don't think they're going for anything new. They don't always have to be like some reinvention of style and fashion, right? There are plenty of new sewists entering um, the sewing community all the time who may not have had access to these patterns when they came out originally. So, you know, not these exact patterns, but at least these styles and designs. So... I don't know, though. What do you guys think? Let me know. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today, and I will be back very soon. Okay, bye.